deleted when the original is deleted? Uh, are virtual copies deleted when the original is? Let's go, as, as far as I know, it will, let me see, I'll have to look is the answer. Uh, let me pick an image just that I don't mind deleting. Take me a second to find. Okay, I don't mind deleting one of these. Um, so if I do this, I right click on it and wait for Photoshop to realize I right click. There we go. Um, I'm going to come in here and say create virtual copy. And as far as I know, what's going to happen is if I delete the original, it will just transform the other one into like the equivalent to the original. Uh, but let's find out to be certain because I don't know for absolute certain. So I'm going to delete that image from my disk. It looks like did they both disappear? I think they did. So it looks like you're going to lose any virtual copies that you uh, have if you uh, end up deleting the original. Okay. Great. Well, I think it's time to take a break. We'll get yeah. to a really cool question when we come back, maybe. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we are going to take it. The first thing I'm going to do, though, with this particular picture is I notice in the lower right there's an exclamation point. You see that little exclamation point down in here? Anytime we see that, it means that this image was most likely adjusted with an earlier version of Lightroom. And so it presents you with the sliders that were available in the old version, not the more modern ones uh, that we've been using. So I'm going to click on that little icon, get it to update it. And now when I did that, did you notice that a lot more sliders showed up here? That's because in earlier versions of Lightroom, we had fewer choices when using the adjustment brush. And once I updated that picture, it gave me all of the sliders that are available in the new version. So if you open an image that you've never adjusted before in the new version of Lightroom, you'd get those sliders by default. It's only if you open a picture that's been adjusted with an old version of Lightroom where you might find that exclamation point in the corner and you'd have to click on it to get the expanded set of sliders that were uh, put in, in Lightroom 4. So anyway, I'm going to try to decide what I think would help to get rid of that color cast. I'm going to do it by adjusting the white balance, which are these two sliders, temperature and tint. And looking at the image, I would see the area that I see through there is too purple. And so if I look at these sliders, I see this kind of purplish, it's really magenta-ish purple over here. And I'm going to move this slider away from that color to say that's what I want it to do to my picture. Now when I move that slider, nothing is changing in the picture because I'm in the adjustment brush and it's waiting for me to brush it into my picture. I'm just guessing at what it needs. Afterwards, I'll be able to change it. Then before I paint, I'm going to look down here at the brush settings. That's where I can choose the size of my brush. I can choose how soft the edge is with feather. And with uh, flow, I can choose how much of my adjustment I get when I first paint across my image. I'm going to make sure my flow is turned up to 100%. So I get 100% of my adjustment. And when I change those, uh, the brush size, I don't usually do it using the slider that's here. I'm so used to working in Photoshop and using the keyboard shortcut of the left and right bracket keys to make my brush larger or make it smaller that I use the same ones here. If I add the shift key to that, that is how you would change how soft the edge of the brush is if you were in Photoshop the same keyboard shortcut works here. You hold down the shift key and you use the same square looking bracket keys on your keyboard. If you hate using keyboard shortcuts, then go ahead and move these sliders around to do it. So I'm going to get a brush a little bit smaller and maybe a semi soft edge on it. And I'm just going to paint it into this area uh, where I see it looking purplish. And as I paint, it's going to change the image. And I'm just going to try to get it in the general area where I think it looks too purple. Try to cover that whole area. And it looks like I was okay at guessing the setting that was going to be needed. Although I might have gone just a little bit too far because now to my eye, there's just a hint of green in there. And if you look at the slider that I used to perform the adjustment. It's this one over here, tint. Moving it away from this uh, magenta-like color, it moves it towards green. And what happens is if you had a, a magenta color cast, once you get rid of it by moving this a certain distance, if you go any further, then you'll be introducing visible